What are spinal bone spurs? When we look at the basic anatomy of the spine, we understand that vertebra or vertebral bones are stacked one on top of another, and normally in a straight and neutral alignment from the front. From the side, there should be normal curves, but from the front, we look completely straight. And the vertebral bodies or the, vertebra or the vertebras are separated by something called intervertebral discs. And these discs um, act as a shock absorber or a cushion or a spacer in between two bones. So you have a bone, you have a disc, and a bone below. The three main areas of the spine are the cervical spine, which is your neck, the thoracic spine, which is in your mid-back, and the lumbar spine, which is in the low back. Now, unfortunately, bone spurs can occur in any area of the spine, and this is something also known as osteophytes, which are bony projections or outgrowth of bone that can develop as a, as a result of many different things. And when these bones develop bone spurs or osteophytes, they typically occur where the edges of bone meet a joint or joint tissue. And in the spine, it's normally where the bones actually meet the discs. Uh, either above or below, because remember, every bone will have a disc above it and a disc below it. These bone spurs can develop in other joints of the body, and uh, including even areas that may not be a joint itself. Like it can occur wherever there may be a, a previous injury or some other type of problem. The most common symptoms associated with bone spurs is sometimes patients experience nothing at all. The bone spur itself normally doesn't cause pain. When the bone spur starts to press on stuff is when it normally leads to pain and discomfort. But bone spurs themselves, a lot of times patients don't even know they have them. They don't find out until they actually get an x-ray taken for some reason, or maybe they're experienced, uh, they get uh, something taken and they look at an image taken and they find, oh look, you have bone spurs of this area of your spine. Specific symptoms really depend on the factors associated with the bone spur, like patient age, the severity, the location, the cause. In some cases, bone spurs can affect joints and they can become painful painful, and the number reason why they become painful is because of decreased range of motion. As these bone spurs get bigger, they can alter the motion um, within that joint, and that lack of motion can lead to stiffness and pain. Bone spurs, like, uh, kind of like bone spurs in a knee, can make it painful to move a knee through extension and bending, and therefore the bone spur is kind of like pressing on something or hurting or hitting the, the material in between, and that can cause pain because the bone spur is affecting the way the joint moves. Bone spur to the spine can also do that that within the spine, meaning making the spine stiff and more difficult to move in certain directions. But unfortunately, bone spurs in the spine can also affect something called spinal nerves and the spinal cord. It could affect the room that the spinal canal has for the spinal cord, and it can affect the room for the spinal nerves exit through the something called the intervertebral foramen, or the, the where the holes or the nerves come out. This compression can lead to irritation, can lead to inflammation, can lead to nerve impingement. Once you affect the nerves, you can affect whatever those nerves are controlling, meaning you can have radicular pain going out throughout the body, wherever that along that nerve pathway, something like sciatica, or it can affect affect function, motor function, it can lead to weakness of uh, muscles and tissues and it can affect organ function because those nerves are controlling every single function of your body. So therefore, bone spurs in the spine can have a much greater effect than just pain like it can have in your knee. What are some, some common causes of bone spurs? Well, another way of looking at bone spurs is the most common cause or the most common diagnosis that's associated with bone spurs is something called osteoarthritis. Now, osteoarthritis is typically an arthritis of the spine that normally causes joint damage. And osteoarthritis is very often called as degenerative joint disease. And very often it's termed, oh, this is like old age arthritis or wear and tear arthritis. Now, I don't agree with this terminology because what it assumes is that you have some, some type of disease that's infecting your entire body and all your, all your joints are going through this degenerative phase where it's, it's degenerating abnormally. Well, the truth is when we look at people that have this type of degeneration or this type of arthritis, we, especially in the spine, you can take an x-ray of the spine, you'll see like every bone above and every bone, bone below look fine, but there are two bones that are degenerated faster than the rest. And what it tells you is that a lot of time, this is a result of alignment. Right, it becomes where, the, where there's misalignment, it will cause these joints to break down and erode faster as a result of the uh, as a result of the alignment. Meaning, uh, your spine is a weight-bearing 
joint. It's compressing as a result of, of gravity. And when there's alignment issues, these, the spine will go through experience degenerative changes that are faster than what it's meant to degenerate, meaning this area is degenerating faster than the rest of your spine. If it was truly a disease, the entire spine would be degenerating at the exact same rate. Once this degeneration happens and the spine starts to hold this misalignment process, it becomes much more vulnerable to injury. It starts developing inflammation. It starts getting a lot of swelling. This compromises the joints and the area where the nerves exit, which can now affect, cause pain, cause spinal nerve, affect the spinal nerve function, and it can affect range of motion and, if, and, this, and affect overall health and well being. So we know that a lot of times degenerative changes are directly related to alignment, just like an unaligned car, right? If you think of a car as not aligned properly, one tire is going to degenerate faster than the other three. You wouldn't say this person, that car has like a tire disease or a tire problem. They have an alignment issue that's causing other problems in the body or in the car, excuse me. So therefore, if you realign the car, that tires stop degenerating abnormally. And this is what we find that this weakened structure causes these, the spine to degenerate abnormally. The most common cause to have a, a, a spinal misalignment is losing the natural curves from the spine, makes it less ability to compress uh, normally as a result of gravity compressing down on the spine, and any type of sideways or frontways curvature like scoliosis can cause asymmetrical degeneration within the spine. So if we know that there is some asymmetry issues and we know there's bone spurs occurring, what are some treatments that are normally done? Well, every answer for how we would treat a bone spur, how it makes somebody feel better or have a better results with their bone spurs is very case specific. But for painful bone spurs, the most common treatment is medications and drugs that are gonna treat the symptoms of the condition, not really treat the underlying cause. Like I mentioned, the most common cause of bone spurs is alignment and medications can't move bones back into the right alignment. They just help reduce the pain that you're experiencing, but normally they're not going to be realigning anything so that whatever is causing that degeneration, whatever is causing those bone spurs, it's going to continue to occur and the bone spurs are continue to get bigger and bigger. Unfortunately, degeneration is also progressive with time. So the longer the spine remains out of alignment, the longer these joints remain out of alignment, the longer this degeneration remains untreated, the worse it becomes. If medications, over-the-counter medications don't work, the next step is they use steroid injections and they inject right where these bone spurs are to try to decrease the inflammation, to try to help improve pain. Again, they're just treating the symptom. They're not dealing with what's actually causing these bone spurs from occurring. Uh, they also recommend rest or some kind of activity modification, but most patients that are developing bone spurs, they normally want to live fulfilling lives, so they only can act, you know, they only can modify their activity for so long, and they normally tend to experience more and more issues doing more and more simpler things. Physical therapy can something that's normally can be recommended as well to help strengthen joints or try to improve range of motion and to help make the body stronger. But normally bone spurs do not occur as a weakness issue. They're not occurring because the body's weak or muscles are weak. Even though I do affect, I do recommend these things to help with general health and well-being of the spine or joints, but they're not addressing the cause. Chiropractic care can't remove bone spurs either, but adjusting the spine back into a better alignment to stop the, the vertebral for the vertebral bones from putting pressure on those nerves can greatly help in, improve what's experiencing. But also by trying to realign the spine, you can help stop the degeneration from further occurring or becoming larger. And that's really the biggest thing is stopping the progressive nature of scoliosis. So removing pressure as uh, moving pressure as a result of the bone spur can help improve mobility, can help improve pain, but most importantly, can help improve alignment. And chiropractic care really works on restoring alignment. And if you could restore alignment, in the normal healthy curvatures and the front view of the spine, the body can now adapt to compressive forces better, which can stop this accelerated aging of that area. So effective treatment for bone spurs is really driven by treating the cause of the bone spurs, not the symptoms of the bone spurs, which is what typically happens. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer a very proactive treatment at looking at alignment of the spine, either from the side or from the front, and trying to realign the spine back into its normal position so bone spurs can, number one, have put less pressure on the nerves, less pressure on the spinal cord to help reduce pain, improve motion, but stop them, again, the progressive nature of bone spurs so therefore the bone spurs don't worsen over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. 
And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.